we're going to explain where is the donor space and why this space is so important. Uh, through a year of working with Dr. Engelke, I've begun to understand the importance of this amazing physiological process. The donor space is the area, the compartment that's formed from the concavity in the middle of the palate and with a very small concavity in the middle of the tongue, which get together and create a little bubble, a space, and that's the space that generates, the person generates the negative pressure to allow for a, a physiological swallow. What happens is the compartment starts expanding, closes hermetically, and then starts expanding. And as it expands, the pressure decreases, the negative pressure increases so much with the expansion and the falling of the tongue. And then the pressure gets to be so much, so low, that the compartment breaks. And then that's the force that propels the saliva or the bowels into the esophagus. So now Dr. Engelke is going to explain more and show you uh, how to understand where this compartment is, what anatomical parts mm -hmm. it encompasses. Thanks so much, Benny. That's private previously. So I'm going to show the, the bodies of the compartment. Please uh, put you a little bit and open the mouth, please. So the bodies of the dental space, we can imagine around the dental arch, but inside the, de the dental arch and not outside, inside along the gingiva, all around the dental arch towards the soft palate. So this is the border of the dental space at the heart tissue part. And please pull out your, your tongue a little bit. And the tongue, the marginal part of the tongue, all this way long around the tongue, from the left side to the right side is the corresponding part which closes the dunder space. So the dunder space is closed in between the tongue and the heart palate in the center. And please pull the tongue a little bit out so we might have an idea that in this area, which I show, I'm showing here, that in this area the negative pressure will arise if there is a complete closure of the border of the donor space around this central area. So please put the tongue in contact with the heart palate and open the lips. Here you can imagine that around the tongue, between the heart palate and the tongue, there is a complete seal. And this seal is the, the this seal supports the formation of negative pressure. And the moment the tongue is pulling down, then in the donor space a negative pressure occurs. And at the moment of swallowing, please swallow now. At the moment of swallowing, the negative pressure is performed and the, the seal, the posterior seal, breaks and accelerates the bolus. It's That's very well. important that you observe that when I swallow, my lips, the facial muscles, are completely relaxed. The pressure is only of the tongue towards creating that negative pressure that will eventually propel the bowl. So it's a perimeter of that area that is in contact that creates a seal to be able to lower that pressure. So if you see, there's only movement here and nothing here. That's what we call the invisible swallow. The only movement we can detect during the swallow is the vertical movement in the upper larynx. So would you be so kind to would you be so kind to swallow again? The vertical movement of the larynx indicates a correct swallow, but no muscle activity around the lips. The lips are completely quiet. Okay, I would like to show the 
you know the exercise, not an exercise, but the test, the, the test which was developed at the Göttingen University by Dr. Knösel. So uh, with this uh, suction tube, we can demonstrate that an opening of the dunda space impedes the person to swallow correctly. So uh, you have seen the swallowing mobility of the, the soft tissue around the mouth, and now uh, I'm going to show. Now I'm going to show you the effect of placing the suction tube into the dunda space. Would you be so kind to open your mouth? I place the suction tube here in contact with the heart pillow, please. And try to, to swallow, please. Okay, thank you very much. As you can see, the positioning of this suction tube into the donor space impedes a person to swallow correctly. There may be some attempts to, to compensate the missing formation of a closed donor space, but a correct swallow without movement of any perioral muscles is impossible. The donda space and the Franco space. The Franco space is the first one which we can detect and it's uh, located between the lips and the connection tongue versus tongue against the heart palate. So the, the lips are clearly detectable, but when you open the mouth, then we have a new site which is shown by the movement of this of this instrument. Okay, to show the thunder space, please uh, put your to show the thunder space with light. We have to show the limits, the borders of the thunder space, which are exactly in this area, which is adjacent to the superior teeth. And please put your tongue, put your tongue in contact with the heart palate. What you can see is mostly that the tip of the tongue takes place at the anterior part of the heart palate, but not the whole tongue. Here we can see that the tongue contacts all around the dental arch, the dental space, and this is the position which we need for the exercises of uplock treatment. Excuse me. I would like to show the working at the ready now. And uh, One of the parts of the activator is Doctor, this is the vector activator. We know this device and we already cut it in a, a shorter version which may fit better to your dental arch. So you place it and before placing it, uh, it's already adapted uh, by coating with the before you adapted it, you may breathe quietly and by breathing we already see that there is an inversion of the, of the membrane into the funnel. Please open your mouth. So immediately after opening the mouth, there is a pressure loss, in, loss of negative pressure with the equilibration of the pressure inside and outside the mouth. Please close your mouth and swallow only one time. Go to swallow again. 
and leave it there. And as you see, there's a slight inversion of the membrane, but there is no activity of the perioral muscles. This is very important. Very important that the perioral muscles are kept quietly in, a, in their position. Please uh, swallow again. And another time. So, as you can observe, the negative pressure in the mouth increases when swallowing repetitively. So, by repetitive swallowing, you may lead, you may obtain very strong negative pressure, which is not not always necessary. The negative pressure which you can achieve can be stronger after a series of swallowing, but it is not advisable to, to be used uh, as the goal of the exercise. Slight negative pressure is the goal of the exercise of the up-lock maneuver, the up-lock positioning of the tongue. Please be so kind to open your mouth again then you can hear that the pressure is lost and the membrane does not show any inversion. Please shut your mouth again. Please, please close your mouth again and swallow. So this time we can see a very slight negative pressure without any tension of muscles around the lips. And please swallow again, swallow again. The negative pressure may be increased, but it is not the aim of the of the. But it is not the aim of the exercise to produce excessive negative pressure. Only moderate negative pressure to obtain a correct tongue position. Okay, please open your mouth. Thank you. So this is the, the basic exercise of the uplock position of the tongue. Uplock means that there is a tight that there is a tight contact between the tongue and the half palate may, and the seal of the dental space. Now we may use the same device for swallowing exercise. We replace the tap by the syringe and then we again ask the person to swallow. Please take it in here. We insert it at the same in the same manner between the lips and the tongue. Excuse me, between the lips and Dental arch, and now I ask you to to suck a little bit of liquid, a little bit of liquid, like a baby, and swallow. Okay. Please do it again. Suction and swallowing. And if suction. Cannot, if swallowing cannot be done, then we can assist the person by injecting a little bit of liquid and ask, ask the person to swallow. Injection and swallow, please. Injection and swallow, please. We have closed the membrane. Now the negative pressure has, formed, has, has been formed. We can repeat the injection of water and please swallow again. So by injecting by injecting the liquid into the mouth we may obtain the effect of a better swallowing and correct swallowing without activity of the perioral muscles. So I inject some liquid and please swallow again 
And as you can see, there is a constant negative pressure here, and that's the same pattern we observe already in the baby when sucking and swallowing. So this is nothing new for the person who is going to train with the device. Please. Aspiration and swallowing. So persons who are not able to produce a correct pattern of swallowing in directly after using the device without, without the syringe, they may be aided by injection and swallow again, please. And now breathe without any without any effort and without any tension of the muscles around around the lips. So when I try to pull it out, there is no tension of the muscles, but the negative pressure holds the device in place. It holds not only the device, but also the tongue. Please swallow again. The negative pressure is still there. I try to take it out. It's not possible, although the lips are completely relaxed. So please open your mouth. You can take it out immediately. And this is the difference because the negative pressure during the formation of the donor space, the closed donor space after swallowing allows a complete seal of the anterior of the anterior parts of the allows a complete seal of the anterior valves of the mouth and therefore do not require a continuous muscle action. This is a very important difference comparing it to myofunctional exercise. It's the difference between thinking about mechanics of solid bodies and mechanics of fluids. And this is very important because the tongue reacts, behaves as a fluid. It's a hydrostatic organ that will take the shape of its container, like a glass of water. The water will take the shape of the glass. Same thing, the tongue will take the shape of the container. So we have to understand the physiology of our swallow, of our breathing, based on the mechanics of fluid bodies and uh, that's been fantastic because we have this uh, this set of appliances in the kit that helps us uh, understand how to improve this in our in our population we are going to plug it, this one into the manometer or? No. So this you can place the vacuum activator, especially the donde pressure measurement in its place. And as you can see, the lips are closed, but without tension of the muscles. It is not necessary to press the lips firmly together, but only in order to swallow slightly. And here you can see the result of your activity. This is the negative pressure, which now can be adjusted between 10 and 20 millibar. Nearly 20 millibar, maybe a little bit more. Oh, perfect, 50 millibar as planned. So there is no tension. It is not necessary to activate the muscle it is not necessary to do any exercise without the initial swallowing act and then a check of the intraoral pressure. And this intraoral pressure can be maintained for minutes until hours. Maybe we have a competition in the future how many times this pressure can be maintained. Okay, so having this experience, please be so kind. Open your mouth. <laughs> but uh, as you as you can uh, as you can see, this is 
the same no, the same method the baby no, is uh, doing its nutrition because the baby also no, is able to produce a negative pressure in the donor space in its donor space and the same the same space is formed with this exercise but the baby is putting more a lot more pressure of course because you have to suck in the, the baby has to suck in but it's the baby uses the same space and during swallowing the adult person also uses the same muscles which uh, does the baby and these muscles are not the external muscles we can see but the, the important muscles which we do not see but which we can detect with this device there are the muscles which elevate the velum palatinum and uh, therefore the measurement of the negative pressure is an indication that the donor space is being expanded. Expanded. That's important. The donor space is being expanded. Doctor, thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, you, you made it perfect, perfectly. The adjustment of the uh, adjustment of the pressure to a le to a level which uh, to the we cannot get it without the manometer. Impossible. But our manometer, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's it's not possible. possible. And this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So the oxygen test, measurement of the saturation during the upper lock maneuver and uh, the placement of the vacuum activator is especially important in elderly patients with cardiac diseases and with obstructive sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for, uh, for children, youngsters, without any risk, this test is not obligatory. Okay, for the respiration test, uh, we first uh, put the vacuum activator, and the vacuum activator allows a complete closure of the oral airway. This is the precondition to measure the nasal function concerning the volume of uh, air which is uh, passing through the nasal, the nasal compartment because if the com nasal compartment is occluded then the vacuum, act uh, the vacuum activator uh, exercises may be uh, contraindicated. So if the nose has any restriction uh, we would observe a change in the oxygen saturation. Here we can prove that the negative pressure, which is indicated here, is continuously present. Continuously present negative pressure implies that the oxygen, the, the oxygen has to be at about 96, 97, 98, up to 100 millibar. So in case of uh, observation of the oxygen drop, when the saturation of oxygen is dropping to a value below 95, with a continuously negative pressure, then we could observe that there is some problem with the respiration procedure. As we can observe here, the pulse frequency and the oxygen saturation does not change, always about 97. And here we observe that the negative pressure is being held. That means that the respiration is performed exclusively by the nasal airway. A test of five minutes shows us if there is any problem. I would like to shorten the test a little bit and I will close just the half part of Dr. Kahn's nose with my finger. So Dr. Kahn is respirating only through the half made half of the nasal airway and we then may observe if there is any yep. 
job of the oxygen. So, what we can observe, negative pressure in the mouth and a little drop to 96, 96 percent of oxygen saturation. Acerca tu pierna. Eso. Sí. 96, but continuously 96. This test also could be done for some minutes, 97, so this does not show any difference. And I try the other side. Again, we close half of the nasal airway. And by closing it, we expect that there should be a drop of the oxygen saturation. In case of the panic problem in the left side, on the left side of the nasal airway, the oral airway is continu continuously closed at about eight to nine, about eight to nine or a little bit less millibar. The saturation the oxygen saturation does not change and always is about 97. So I may interrupt this evaluation now and uh, to, to give a summary under condition of the complete mouth closure under up lock condition that means tongue in contact with the hard palate, the up lock position. Under this condition, a change of the oxygen saturation cannot be observed. Therefore, there is no medical risk for using the vacuum activator. Okay, I think we can stop this. Okay. Hello. I'm extremely excited to introduce to you the new Forwardonix vacuum activator with Bluetooth. This is the prototype and the Bluetooth activator will come in its little box, which is super cute. And this is just a prototype, but I'm going to show you how it works. So basically you have a button here and you are going to turn it on. When you turn it on, you will see a green light that's activated right here. Okay, that means it's ready to go. So I'm gonna put it on and then we are going to use our phone that we have uploaded the application and this will give you the time of use and the pressure. Remember the instructions for the Bluetooth activator are the same as a regular activator. So you ask the user to swallow three times, put it in the mouth, it goes in between the teeth and the cheeks, and then you swallow three times. When we swallow, the pressure will go down, the negative pressure will go down to, towards the 100, 50 to 100 millibars. And when we hold it after three swallows, it should go up to about 10, minus 10 to minus 15 millibars. And then we can train ourselves to get the right pressure. It's very important to learn and cement the muscle memory, have our brain just uh, with brain plasticity cement that position with a very light pressure so that we can hold this just to practice appliance so that we can learn that position. And then when we go to sleep without any appliances, the tongue will naturally go there and it will hold through negative pressure, very light negative pressure as a reflex. That way we will be sleeping, we will be breathing 95% effortless, and we will be able to hold our um, tongue in the right position for reparative sleep and so that the brain is not busy helping us breathe, but it's busy in its all functions. The brain needs to be cleaning and storing our memories, organizing. It does have to be bothered by uh, 
helping us breathe. So when we wear this, we learn how to hold that position with that conscious effort. All right, so I'm gonna put it on, and then I will show you in the app how it will record the pressure. You will see the three swallows, and then I will hold the pressure, okay? All right, let's try it. Here we saw, this is the prototype only, how we measure the pressure and how when we swallow saliva, the pressure goes up. We see the time of use and the pressure here to which is raising or decreasing the uplock activator. This is a great addition to the armamentarium, the tools that we have at Forwardonics to improve the rest position in kids, adults, snorers, athletes, and any person that wants to improve his respiratory efficiency. This is a Bluetooth device in development. So you see it's on, here's the green light, and we are going to calibrate, putting a sensor into the donor space in the roof of the mouth. We're gonna swallow three times hard, and then we are going to try to hold a pressure. This is a pressure, this is a time. We're gonna to try to hold it between 10 to 15 millibars. See if we can get that curve. So I'm gonna put it on, and we are gonna use our app where it shows the pressure and the time that we've been holding the pressure. So we're gonna to try to hold the pressure about 10 to 15 millibars of pressure. So first I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna th swallow three times. So you will see the, the hard pressure. And then I'm gonna be releasing the pressure until I find myself in the right area. See how long I can uh, hold it. It's a, it's a, it's work. That's fine. It's yeah, work. It's but did you see how flat I got it? I see. This is important to see that at, at the end of the record, it is important to swallow one time and to open the mouth. Then it's clear that this was the maintaining the negative period. This, this curve is perfect. 